Hello again, and welcome back to the Beth Chateau Gardens. So it's the uh, last day of November, um, and after a very dry summer, uh, we've luckily had some rain for about a month. So we're at an ideal time to propagate polygonatums. Now, many of you will already know polygonatums, and there's quite a wide variety of them. Um, here, we stock 12 different types, and all of them are propagated in the same way. So although you can grow polygonatums from seed, we do them all by division. And if we're working on a bed and it's going to be done by division, we tend to leave the flowering stems till they die back. And as we can see here, we've got a bed where all the stems are ready to come out, which you could just happily pull out by hand. So if you weren't propagating and you were just building up a stock in your garden, leave them until they look like this and then just clear the top. And what you'll ensure is that all the goodness from the actual plant has retreated back into the rootstock. Now, this particular rootstock is wonderful to work with. And in an odd sort of way, it's quite unique. Um, it's very shallow rooted, but the nature in the way in which it grows means that it intertwines with itself. And we'll see an example of that later. But this intertwining means that year on year, the actual carpet of the polygonatums gets deeper. So this particular bed has been in place for about five years. We're going to dig up a small chunk and then we'll take it back to the shed, wash it off, and we'll actually look at how we propagate them. Now, bear in mind that when you lift polygonatums, the root stock is quite brittle and it will break. And there's nothing that you can do about that to stop them from breaking. But luckily, every part of the polygonatum can be used. So our waste product when we've finished actually propagating, we will return to the stock bed to help it increase in size and increase in number. So as a recommended form of lifting, I would use a large fork with wide ties and relatively small gaps in between. This will reduce the damage to the rootstock when we lift it. Unlike other plants, our herbaceous plants, which we've worked around, these you can just lever from one side because they're so low. So this fork will be sliding completely underneath the rootstock. We still do our leaning back and allowing the body to do the work. You can see how easily and loose it comes from the ground. We just shake off some of the weight and it's already starting to fall apart. Here we can see one has come detached from the main body, but we just gently pull away the soil and lift our clump if we can, putting all our pieces into the wheelbarrow. So we'll just get a bit more. And I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear them snapping. And I'm taking a bit of the soil as well because I will be able to put them in a crate and clean them off. So now we've excavated a few bits. Let's head back to the shed and process them. I'll just cover the hole up until I come back to replant and I'll leave my fork by the side of it to mark the spot. So, I'll meet you back at the shed. Ah, oh, well, now we're back to the shed. So, before we actually start to look at the plant, just a couple of few things to bear in mind. I mentioned earlier on that we have 12 different varieties here. Um, now we range from some of the more normal type that you might expect to see, like um, uh, Polygonatum hirtum or Polygonatum exhybridium. Um, the hirtum is a smaller form with a nice sort of oval leaf, uh, really nice uh, green in colour, uh, whereas the, the exhybridium um, is one which is a real statement plant. We're talking sort of up to maybe 60 to 90 centimeters high, so almost almost three feet. And the polygonatums have this beautiful arching habit. And once the foliage comes up in sort of April, May, June is when you start to expect to see the flowers. And these are small, sort of almost like um, bell-like white flowers that'll be hanging down. Some will be a purer white. And then as the season goes on, these flowers will develop into seeds and berries which will hang down and again give a very sort of like dynamic sort of statement. 
Now, polygon artems are a plant of patience. So when you first get them and you plant them, give them a bit of space to move because they have a spreading habit and they'll just slowly creep out from a bed. So they won't actually form a clump, but they'll form a swathe. And the very nature of the beast is that they do intermingle. So you'll find that the density of foliage and the density of flowers will increase year on year. Uh, personally, um, from experience here, we plant up a stock bed, 32 plants, all from one litre pots, the same as what we'd get from the nursery. And after about, you know, we, we sort of plant them one trail apart. And after about three or four years, you'll find that they've actually completely filled a eight foot by four foot stock bed. So you can see that although you have to wait a little while, once they start to really take hold, year on year, you'll get an exponential increase in the actual plant. And it's that exponential increase that we take sort of our stock from, trying to leave the main body in place. And like I say, we replant back into them. Now today, we're gonna to look at one of the special ones. Um, now this is a um, variety called Red Stem. Uh, its full name is Polygonatum odoratum Red Stem. And it's very much bought for the vibrance red of the actual stem itself. And we have another one here, which is um, called X, uh, Polygonatum X Hybridium uh, Betberg. And that one has got this purple stem. And again, it's got a nice piece of height. Now I keep saying Polygonatum, and many of you will recognize this plant as Solomon's seal. Um, they aren't native to this country, but they are fully hardy. So you can grow them quite easily in this country. They like a full, you know, sort of rich, fertile soil. And they'll grow happily in full sun or partial shade, very much associated in this country with woodlands. But in all honesty, I've grown them here in full sun and they perform just as well. So as you saw earlier on, we dug a clump up and that particular bed was quite nice and loose and it sort of started to fall apart. Sometimes when you lift them, you'll find that it's almost like a wedge and you can almost be feeling it's like a piece of turf. It's so thick and dense. But no matter what, whether it's a thick, dense part or whether it's collapsing apart, the first thing you want to do is to wash it off. Now, initially, if it's a clump, if it's a large chunk, you can just wash that and it'll hold itself together. But what we experienced as it was falling apart means we want to gather that together and give it a wash so we can see what we're doing. So I will put what we've dug into a crate and luckily I have already pre-washed some. So I'll just look after these. Now quite a robust plant and you can see that at the moment we've still got quite a lot of the soil with it and a little bit of detritus. So in this particular black crate, as you can see, it's almost like a very large sieve. So I can get rid of the excess soil. The plants are robust enough to take the shake. We haven't got to worry about damaging it. We now take it away and wash it. And in true sort of like um, Blue Peter fashion, I suppose, I have one that I prepared earlier. So I'll place this one down here. pull up the washed ones. Now, as you can see, they're bright white and they really are trying to sort of like inform you about how they want to be split and how their growing patterns work. And this is one of those plants where if you know how they grow, the actual um, propagation of the plant is so much easier. So here I have a couple of examples of things to consider. Firstly, polygonatums, the flowering stem will come from the end, grow up, die back in a season, and it will leave this node here. And it looks like a knuckle. And it's from that knuckle that the next New Year's growth is gonna grow from. Now you might have a classic two. You might find if you get your conditions absolutely right, you'll get three, four, or five. Sometimes you find that there's a bias to one side and often this is where the soil is looser or richer to one side. But in all cases, they really do look like a small hand or claw, maybe a chicken's foot, where it's got these fingers and these little upright, which are the next New Year's growth. It's from here that our stem is gonna grow. And so this is the part that we want to propagate. Now, 
polygon atoms are all about comparison. So if we look at a full size one, a good flowering stem, you can see in this particular case, is the thickness of my finger. So when I'm splitting my plants, if I was to look at this, I would go, I would want to put these two back in the ground to make up for next year to swell and grow again. And this one is what I'd consider to go in the pot. Now here, when we make a pot, we put two or three pieces in. So you can see that what I'll be doing is returning this and then taking that one away to put into a one litre pot. Sometimes even the really large ones will actually go to a two or three litre size. However, when we're splitting them, we are always mindful of how they are going to grow. Because what you'll end up with is this interlacing and you can see how it's growing into each other and around each other. So if you're at home and you're trying to increase the bed rather than to dig plants for propping, I would look at this and I'd go, I've got a nice show that this and this and this are gonna be restricted by the ones on top. I would dig it in the same way, but I'd either try and unweave it or I'd break one off to enable me to pull them apart to then be able to plant them separately. Because each year, this is gonna grow up, like I say, grow back down, and this is where the knuckle is gonna be formed. So a new knuckle will appear here and it will spread that way, increasing the carpet. So like I say, once you've washed it, it's then a really easy job. Put that to one side. Look at the plant. If it's gonna go into a pot, consider the size of the pot, consider the fact that it's gonna grow from this node and cut accordingly. Now the darker part, is the previous year's growth. And you can see from here, there's a knuckle. We've had one year's growth, another knuckle. So we've had another year's growth, another knuckle. So we've had another year's growth. So we know that this stem, counting back, one, two, three years old, knuckle is four years old. If you are tidying up, if you want good, strong growth, you would cut this here and you could discard this. However, you could plant this back in the ground and you'll find that it will reshoot from this knuckle and this knuckle. In this case, you can see how we've got this one attached to this stem here. So if I was gonna put this into the pot, I would go, we have a small one, a large one. I want to put this back in the ground, but I want the plot, pot to be good value for money. So I will remove this node. That will go back in the ground. And this is what will go into the pot. So that when you receive your polygon atom, you not only will get two or three of these, which will produce your flowering stems, will die back and become a knuckle, but this will actually produce new ones as well. So you'll find that if you just put the plant, the pot straight in the ground, that you'll not only get them growing from the new growth, but you'll get a resurgence from the old. Apart from that, it's a case of working through, tidy them up, and if you get the conditions right, you'll find that when you dig them, as we dug them earlier, that they end up snapping where they've narrowed near the knuckle that they were attached to. And you can see how that plant has this sort of narrowing effect. Very similar to when we looked at the irises, how they naturally narrow towards the parent plant. So we'd be looking at grading these plants, and I'd recommend that you do the same if you lift them at home, because what you want to do is you want to go I want one really good one in my flowering area, maybe two, and I'll put a small one in to help make up. If you want them to all face or fall in one direction, bear in mind that these are gonna come back on themselves when they grow. The plant will grow away from the knuckle, from that, from that node that we've looked at repeatedly, however, the actual curve of the plant will curve back over itself. So if you're planting them in a bed and you want the display to tumble onto the bed, plant them so this is the edge of the bed and so they're facing away. So if this is my path, they're pointing to the back of the border. It'll ensure that your plants curve towards you so you get the full effect and the plant will actually spread backwards to increase your swathe. Planting, really easy. In a normal pot, fill it two thirds, place these on top, and then cover it with another third of your growing medium. We finish ours with bark, 
outside on a stock bed, I may just put a little bit of bark to maybe hold a bit of moisture or a piece of leaf mulch. If you do them at this time of year, they will root over the winter. So by me propagating our plants now, they will be ready early doors, February, March. If you do your work in the garden at this time and you rearrange and redistribute your Solomon seals at home now, you will find that you will get that, that display this year. You will be looking at flowers in that June, sort of May, June time. Um, a couple of things that we always sort of like to say is that when teaching students, we teach them that if they think of these as a monster's hand, when you get the larger ones, that you'll always remember which way to, pl to plant them because the curves will come up. And if you think of these as the fingers, then think Halloween. The moment you have Halloween, you think of the claws. Now you know is the time to propagate your polygonatums. Like I say, all the ones we do here can all be propagated by the same method. And there are some really interesting ones. And there's ones that are ideal for either putting at the back of the border and maybe hiding a piece of a hedge or a piece of a fence or along the edge of your shed. And that will actually sort of those higher, taller ones like the um, hybridium will give you that really nice sort of softening of a hard edge compared to some of the smaller ones like Polygonatum hookeri, which you could bring to the fore and they will actually create a display that you can see behind. They are quite seasonal, but the foliage will last over the summer and will die away towards the back end of the summer. Pests and diseases, not really too much problem. One of the big problems with um, Polygonatums can be sawfly. Um, and it's very much potluck if you get it because it is a pest that comes in from outside. We don't use um, pesticides or herbicides here. Um, often if we see um, sawfly here, we just remove the foliage that is suffering from it. We clear the area around it to try and expose the soil a bit more, to try and increase wildlife and its ability to control our pests. Um, if you did want to go down a biological control, you could look at nematodes, which could be watered in um, and they would actually help control the sawfly problem. But I've been growing them here for about seven years and at home I've had them for about 14. Um, and in both cases, I've never really suffered from sawfly. So it is a little bit depending on where you are in the country as to whether you sort of like suffer from this problem or not. Uh, you will be pleased to hear that if you do have a problem that you can't get on top of, what I'd recommend is you actually lift the plant wash them as though you're going to propagate them and then replant them somewhere else. You'll often find that just relocating them maybe by only 50, 60 feet is enough to actually alleviate the problem. As a plant, absolutely adore them. Historically, they have been around for a very long time and it is said that it was on the um, seventh seal of King Solomon's mine, a picture of the um, Solomon seal, which is where the common name comes from. Um, so they are a plant with history, they're a plant with variation, and there are so many different types out there. It's a fun plant to do, and it's a lovely plant to do at sort of this time of year on a perfect November morning like today. So if the weather's good where you are, why not get out and have a go? And if you haven't got them in the garden, explore them as a new plant. They'll be an addition to any planting that you have. In the meantime, I suppose I better work through these because 12 varieties, a couple of hundred of each might take me a little while. So have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you again.